let's get started. So that's our little team there that we see from a software side of things. Terry Sheehy is my manager along with me. There are two more. We call ourselves as one IBM team. We have hardware team as well together along with us, Steve and Rudy. So we go as a single solution to end customers through business partners, both software and hardware. Hence we've called it as a one IBM team. So from a business partnership point of view, there are three different types with IBM. One is a standard PPA partnership, which is a passport advantage partnership where the business partner is able to sell the standard offering from IBM as a standard software. The second option is a primary support provider where the business partner takes care of level one, two, and three kind of support. Um, and it's an exclusive arrangement where business partner has an expertise in a particular domain and they kind of own the licenses and deploy to end customers. The third variety is embedded solutions arrangement or an embedded solutions agreement. The business partner would be called as embedded solution tech partner or ESA tech partner. While Ingram Micro is being distributed, we would be called as ESA tech broker. In this case, either there is a custom service provided by the business partner to the end customers, or there is a end solution or a custom solution that is business partner branded underneath which IBM technology is sitting, which is wrapped around. There could be multiple other third party solutions in that offering, but end of the day, uh, business partner becomes the customer of IBM and the final solution goes to the um, customer. Now from a business opportunities point of view, um, we have on-premise licenses type of uh, opportunities, which is called IBM New Software. Then there is software as service, which is consumed directly from cloud in a subscription basis, either monthly, quarterly, or per annum. Then there are some existing customers or many existing customers, so to speak, but um, if they have been left unattended or if they're looking for new business partners, there's a new opportunity in there for an additional revenue from a software renewals point of view. This is on an ongoing basis. Now from verticals or domains, so to speak, in a very broad category, we have cloud, cloud integration. And um, in this case where it could be data integrating between different clouds like AWS, Azure and IBM cloud, or it could be information going from on-premises to cloud. So there is a cloud integration um, category in there. Then there is data and artificial intelligence or data and AI, where there is business analytics and artificial intelligence built into uh, for example, uh, cash flow of businesses, finding out business analytics, how business can be improved, or what is so critical about it at the moment based on data. Then from a security point of view, we have threat management and digital trust as a very broad category. It could be mobile device management, to endpoint management, to behavioral analytics through QRADAR, products like QRADAR. A uh, lot of intelligence comes from a setup called as X-Force from IBM. About five to 6,000 people work behind security around the clock to provide security intelligence from around the globe that keeps things really secure. Watson is an underlay technology uh, under many of the products, but especially Watson Assistant for Customer Care uh, can help customers, especially in the scenario where frequently asked questions, for example, from a website can be automated in terms of somebody visits the customer's website, a chatbot goes back to them with all the answers that customers is looking for. And there's a lot of machine learning and intelligence built around it, not just the FAQ, but chatbot would be a good start from a Watson point of view. 
Then there are supply chain solutions or the customer engagement solutions in the supply chain bucket. There are a few solutions around it. Now, while I'm going through, it's good to point out that there are a little over 500 to 600 different products uh, in all these categories uh, under the IBM software brand. You would know that most of the big banks use IBM services in the financial sector because it is highly powerful and secure. Could be ASB Bank, Westpac, or many of the other banks around the globe. And from an asset management point of view or enterprise asset management, we do have some solutions that fall under the category of Internet of Things. We've got products like IBM Maximo. Now, having said the overall categories, uh, just a dipstick check. Is the pace going okay? Is there a lag? Are you able to see the slides? It, it is perfect on all fronts. Great, thank you. Now, I've put some ballpark figures in here from a pricing range point of view. It could be a little exaggeration on the first line item where it, I say it's in the dollar point one four. What I'm trying to say is the perception that I had when I joined Ingram to work with IBM Solutions is it's a very niche product, it's very expensive, and it's going to be complex and things like that. But as I went through the whole process, I saw that there are several uh, price line items that could be as simple as $4 uh, per device management or mobile device management. And it can range up to an appliance, which is a combination of both hardware and software coming in a box. It can go up to 31 million kind of a thing that for federal government kind of opportunities. So there is a very uh, broad range of products can start from as simple as $4. As I said, most of the SaaS products go between one and $20,000 per month kind of a subscription. Depends on your usage, but there are definitely multiple options in there. About 19,000 price line items in on-premise license solutions and about 16,000 price line item in uh, software as service. Plenty of field to play in there. Uh, we will take one at a time based on your interest. Then from a charge units point of view, it could be per unit base, per user based, uh, per device, per million calls, per virtual processor core, or per CPU. There are different products ranging um, in different measures. And there are monthly on-premise licenses. There are committed term licenses where a customer commits for say two years, but pays monthly or quarterly. Then of course there are perpetual licenses that is paid kind of upfront and the customer owns the license. So there are multiple options to play with. Now from an Ingram point of view, when we facilitate any IBM business opportunity, we have a very structured approach. Although we are kind of very flexible, but we have well thought this through. Let me put a context or a scenario that there is a a uh, business opportunity that is identified. Then we quickly have a look at the price list, different options and provide an indicative price so that we can start the customer engagement, warming up the conversations. Then parallelly, we check for eligibility for some of the generous incentives that come from IBM. Then we also parallelly look at if the customer um, has already been enrolled with an IBM system are they an existing customer at some point in time? If not, we enroll them from Ingram point of view, we take care of that. Then every registered opportunity uh, or a deal it's called as, it's registered in a site called as my sales activity within IBM. So we tend to enable business partners and support them register this opportunity. And once it is registered, it could be eligible for some of the incentives offered by IBM. Then going further, uh, we register that incentive. And then if it is a case of software renewals, there is a document that would be required that is called as a proof of entitlement. If a business partner is not an incumbent partner, then we would use this document to base the price uh, for the next renewal. So there's plenty of opportunities in there that we regularly see it happening. 
And then once we have this basic information, we provide a formal code, then uh, we apply. If there are any additional discounts, we go through a special bit process with IBM. And then we provide a revised code as designed. And then of course, there's the PO processing that happens between the uh, business partner Ingram and IBM. Now that's overall from a software landscape. I know I'm breezing it through, uh, but all you need to know from the session is I would be a contact person for you. If you need anything, you could just drop me an email and then we will take on a case by case basis. But what I'm really excited today is that we are about to launch something called as Ingram Partner Academy. Here's a small team of people who were involved. This is a few months in the making. Again, this is an exclusive one IBM team initiative, but we foresee that this is going to expand pretty wide and deep. All in all, all of our seven team members uh, from Ingram Micro dedicated for IBM are available to work on this. Um, we regularly liaise with uh, IBM to get some uh, answers, support, training on all the sales opportunities we work with. It's basically an opportunity for us to mutually grow our business. I would be happy to share um, this presentation later where we would have an article where Jason Langley is presenting about how Ingram Micro is standing by in current situations and how we are there to support. I think there is also a session planned tomorrow, if I'm right. So what can a uh, business partner expect or what can we expect from each other? It's kind of mutual agreed upon in the Ingram Partner Academy where it is divided into marketing, sales, and IBM operations enablement. The operations could include uh, skill development, training, uh, any uh, support on business opportunities. But on this slide, let's just talk about the marketing aspect of it. Initially, we will go through a gap analysis using a nine box uh, method that would give the current status and there would be uh, a report generated out of that. Few experts from marketing field would analyze that and they would come up with a feedback and come up with a lead generation plan end of the day by reviewing uh, the results. From a sales point of view, there would be sales education, skills training, uh, planning and specific execution to your current scenario. It's not a generic template that we are going to use. It's going to be one-on-one, -on -one, but we do have a generic framework within which uh, most of the business partner would fit in. But going down the line, if the business partner wants to jump into a specific area on a specific business opportunity, Ingram Partner Academy would pitch in to support that. And from an Ingram and um, IBM point of view, we would facilitate with relevant content to a particular product, IBM product or solution, promotions, uh, also training and certification. So it's a complete package of marketing to sales, and then it gets transferred onto IBM operations. How do we basically execute in increasing our business? So how do we basically evaluate this? Um, we would have defined milestone, mutually agreed upon milestone from a marketing point of view, from a sales point of view, as well as from IBM operations point of view, what really means or a success to you or what is kind of critical to your business partner. So we first define that mutually agree upon a roadmap. We start working on activities. Of course, it's a kind of mutual agreement, as I said. So we keep progressing through that and based on a target date or a, we call that as a partner enablement level one, level two and so on. Then we go through that framework for a relatively new business partner, but for a mature business partner, possibly we may jump into milestone two or milestone three and then start working from there on a particular segment of any of these three. That's kind of rough breeze through of the framework that we are um, trying to work on. Uh, there could be multiple information. I know it's quite a lot. All you need to remember is this is my contact information. 
if any of these topics is interesting or if you have something else that you've already come across under IBM and you would like to know more, I'm more than happy and available to assist you on that. And having said that, I kind of would like to pause and open it up for any questions from the team, from the audience, from you, Sean. Um, excuse the fact that I've got a bit of background noise. My neighbors have decided to do construction, but there are two questions. Um, are consulting services from IBM able to be sold by channel partners? You know, so the traditional sort of IBM services. So in, in short, if we look at the embedded solutions agreement, kind of a partnership that I spoke about the third one, it falls under that bucket. So if a business partner or if you like a business partner would want to provide those kind of services and you want to build your own IP around it, you're more than welcome to do that under that business model. That's more than welcomed. Okay, and um, is there a specific schedule of courses that, um, you know, training courses and things like that as part of the Ingram Partner Academy? Absolutely, great question in there. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump onto this website. Um, hope you're able to see my screen. I hope I have shared my whole desktop. Yep, it's working perfectly. Great. So this is an IBM Partner Certification Program website. As you can see, there are different verticals of cloud, data and AI, uh, Watson, there are hardware uh, related courses as well. These are the different topics. You could browse through different tabs and choose the one that is relevant to um, you in a scenario, particular scenario. So for example, if I choose cloud as my vertical, under the cloud, there would be different competencies. There are a little over 80 software product groups, but let's just say you're in the cloud bucket. There are about multiple competencies within the cloud bucket. We choose a particular competency that is relevant to me, to my scenario, to my business opportunity. I choose that. Then there are two different buckets. One is a sales bucket. The other is a technical bucket. So under the sales, there would be few training courses that are listed that would enable from a product positioning point of view, uh, objection handling, uh, who would be the target customers. That would really be a kind of teaser, very comprehensive, very good courses. I have done some of these myself. I'm very impressed with that. Then the technical team could be pre-sales team, solution architects, um, or even deep dive um, technical people who can take up these courses. What in fact I have done is rather than just leading to this website, we've come up with a sequential order in which business partner goes through. This is the first course. This is the first introductory video I look at. Then I look at a product sheet or a data sheet, and then I go into a deep dive course. So we have put that sequential order in which the information can be easily digested and deployed on the field. So yes, this is definitely one of the recommended sites for self-paced online training. Uh, that is the best recommended. And this would lead to examination and certifications. At the beginning, there would be some entry level quiz questions. Once we pass through that, then there are um, intermediate level where you get badges once you pass those exams. It could be uh, an internal website that runs these exams or some of the sales mastery or technical sales mastery courses are proctored exams where you can take the exam going into a Parson Vu examination center or you can take it at your own place. Uh, it would be proctored through the web camera. You left, they will inspect your place and then it would be a one hour or two hour uh, exam courses that you take and you do get a certification and a badge. Um, you can associate that with uh, your pattern world profile to get additional incentives and rebates. And uh, do you think there are specific verticals? Um, this is the last question. Um, are there specific verticals or opportunities that you think new partners could uh, explore? You know, are there verticals maybe? Yep. Um, the tabs that we look at here can be considered as a vertical, but mm -hmm. this may mean something to some of the business partners or if we are looking at some of the industry verticals, we pick that up and then we can align uh, these to that. 
Okay. And um, lastly, how would a partner find the different products um, within the IBM portfolio that could be of interest to them and their customers? This would be one of the sites where you get an entry into uh, Pattern Well, the best way would be to drop me an email. As I said, there are a little over 500 to 600 different products, and about 16, 17,000 price line items. The best way would be to contact me, just drop me an email. I'll have a specific conversation and make the job really easier rather than having to search in a lot of places. Thank you, I appreciate your time very much. Thank you, Sean, thank you for organizing this. Looking okay. forward to our next steps. Yes, awesome. Uh, we'll, we'll be back in touch with a draft of the story and go from there. Lovely. Take care. Have a great day. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.